Hi everyone, welcome to this week's edition or episode, I should say, of uh, the Recruitment Reality Podcast. I am delighted to be joined by uh, Robert Garner, who I, I actually, this is the first time that we've met, right? Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited to learn more about uh, your background, obviously seen you on LinkedIn and uh, had a little delve into a really interesting background. And I think you can really share some um, some interesting insights with our audience, both from uh, working within recruitment, then you know becoming a developer and then now starting your own successful business. So without me uh, giving away too much, which I probably have done already, um, it'd be awesome if I could hand over to you, Robert, and you could just give us a very quick kind of background to you, background to Abstraction Labs, and uh, and yeah, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me here. And uh, yeah, good to meet you as well for the first time as well, Andrew. Um, but yeah, a bit about me, um, largely, largely kind of recruitment for, for most of my career. So I used to start off selling uh, recruitment advertising space to recruitment agencies, to uh advertising agencies that look specifically after the recruitment industry uh i deliberately went into recruitment uh, i used to sell to a lot of recruitment firms really like the sound of it uh and then moved into media recruitment so recruiting for uh, tv stations radio stations magazines newspapers uh outdoor companies ad agencies all that kind of that sexy stuff that doesn't actually pay that much money um and then yeah ended up starting my own recruitment company had that for about six years uh went to launch a job board as well uh media specific job board but found it incredibly hard to get the traction on the search engines so kind mm. of pack that in uh moved into ta uh so worked in house uh for a major ad agency and for a major uh kind of media company years ago and then eventually moved into software development. Uh, and in my last role, I was developing uh, recruitment CRMs for a major kind of recruitment CRM provider. Uh, and then, yeah, started my business recently making recruitment websites. So, yeah, a theme of recruitment throughout. Yeah, but lots of different things within recruitment. It's interesting, um, the job board thing. So Willow, back in the day, we, we tried to be a job board uh before willow was really willow and exactly the same thing right it's just it's super mm -hmm. hard to compete even though sorry indeed the likes of indeed it's not a very you know it's not really like a an amazing job board as in for the candidates no, the no, experience no, isn't incredible yeah. but they've just got so much money to throw at it that getting yeah. anywhere in the search engine is is nigh on impossible right um, yeah, so yeah, there's so many improvements you can make to to these job boards. Uh, and I'm sure they've got it in their pipeline, in their kind of product maps and stuff like that. But yeah, the, their teams are so big. Their marketing teams are so big. The, the advertising budgets they have are, are huge. And if you're, like you said, if you're starting up a job board, it's, it's tough to compete with uh, that level of resources. So uh, I, I thought it was a good job board. But yeah, I just, I just couldn't get it to rank. And if you're not getting it to rank, then people aren't going to see it and they're going to apply for the jobs and you know so on and so forth. So it's always that kind of chicken and egg with, with job boards, really. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, uh, yeah, I, I, it's just unbelievably tough. So uh, I'm glad that you jacked it in. So did we and did something different. <laughs> uh, and, look at, and look at us now. I know, um, I know. It's the better things. So... Um, the thing I'm most intrigued about, this is just from my personal, uh, you know, interest really, is obviously, so you'd worked in recruitment for a long time. How did you then switch from recruitment to full stack developer? What what did you, did you, you know, go back to uni? Was it something you'd already trained in in the past? You know, how did that work? Um, just just self-taught. And yeah, you kind of get to a point where it's a lot of just copy and pasting. I just do a lot of copy and pasting now. So... <laughs> Just on Stack Overflow, and uh, that's it. I, I don't even know what I'm copying and pasting anymore. But um, no, it was during the. Um, it was um, just before COVID. I I kind of was working for a, an ad agency, and um, it were there, there were some great people there, but it just wasn't it wasn't my kind of outfit. 
uh, and the and the workload was huge. I was kind of managing like twenty to thirty roles at any one time, mm. uh, and some of these were like you know super senior, you know like C suite roles, and it was just the work was just too much. And I decided, yeah. you know what, like I, I just can't keep up with this anymore. And uh, I jacked it in like maybe two weeks before lockdown kicked in, thinking like, oh, like you know no big deal. I'm just gonna go off and you know get a job somewhere else. Like you know I'm in demand. Uh, and had some interviews, and then everything just went kind of dead, and I was just like, "Oh, actually, okay, I'm not going to be able to get a job." Uh, and then I was just thinking, you know, do I want to carry on down this route anyway? Like, I wasn't particularly enjoying it. So, over that period, um, I just, yeah, I just taught myself. Like, I think there's there's so many resources online these days. You know, you've got YouTube, you've got all these, you know, for software development, you've got things like Code Academy and all these kind of things, Udemy or Udemy, whatever it is. Uh, and I just, yeah, just taught myself. Um, my stepdad used to uh, work, it used to be like a head of IT. So we kind of grew up with computers in the house and playing around and putting together computers and stuff like that. Um, and I kind of grew up with them from an early age. And I just thought, yeah, I'll, I'll just kind of teach myself. And then luckily, I had a friend of mine I used to work with years ago, who was the CTO, who still is, of a, kind of a fintech company, a sure tech company. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was chatting to him one day and he went, oh, look, do you know what? We're, we're actually looking for a junior developer. Do you want to come join us? I was like, yeah, I'd love to. Um, I, I'd applied for about a thousand jobs up until that point. So uh, my chances were like pretty slim. So like anyone offering me anything, I just jumped at. And then, yeah, there's like courses, like this thing called like uh, the open source uh, kind of university where it has like access to like every computer science course out there like you can literally take the courses that harvard do like cs50 uh, and get certificates from them as you kind of go through the uh, as that so you can kind of take that as well so um but yeah just learn on the job and you're just always reading and yeah that's how i did it anyone yeah, if, yeah if i can do it anyone can do it go for it and quit your job for, uh, don't be a yeah, well, um, for those that don't know, you know, 90% of your time as a developer is spent Googling the answer anyway, right? Or chat GPT in the answer, yeah. being pasting it. So, right? That's how it works. It's that yeah, easy. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. I love that. I love that story. And I, I do agree. It's, it, there, there's a, when I've looked into like starting to learn code, the thing that you really need is just commitment because all of the all of the learning stuff is out there right but then you have to have the appetite and the commitment to stick at it and not get distracted and do the easy thing and go back to the you know the the, the day job as such so uh, it's it's admirable to um to to have stuck at it and then obviously you went through a few developer roles and then set up uh, abstraction labs so how did how did that come about and what, what was the what was the problem that you sort of saw in the recruitment market that you wanted to solve um well, recruiting websites so i so when i started up my recruitment company back in 2012 i just started off with uh i think it was like a GoDaddy or a wix or a squarespace or whatever it is but not to kind of you know there's, there's many kind of template providers out there so um, I had one of those and it did, you know, a really good job um, as a as a shop front to show that I was kind of a, a legitimate business. And I had that for about a year, maybe a year and a half or so. And then uh, a friend of mine that I used to work with that I ended up going to work for um, the CTO, um, he made me uh, my website for my old recruitment agency. And uh, he did, honestly, such an amazing job, like unbelievable job. I, I got a, an SEO guy, I used to head up a, an SEO agency in London to kind of do the SEO work on it. And it would literally rank top one, top two spots for every possible search term. So, you know, media recruitment agency, media recruitment firm, um, agency in London, all these kind of things. It was like Google definition. Uh, you know, you write random blog posts about um, laptop bags and they'd be ranking on page one. Um, they just did such an amazing job. And it just kind of made me think there's, there's so many recruitment websites out there that I don't think represent the company's brand and what they do and the services they provide as well as they possibly could. Uh, and that's why I went into this. Like I want to make good websites for people that perform well uh, and kind of get across that message that you want to convey, you know, when you're talking to your clients face-to-face -face or when you're talking to your candidates face-to-face, -face, I want to get that across digitally. 
uh, and probably kind of represent your business. So yeah, I think there's a lot of poor websites out there and yeah, I just want to make them better. Yeah. Make it awesome. better world through recruitment websites. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, very philanthropic of you, Robert, I have to say. Uh, <laughs> I get paid. No, there is, so yeah, there is a lot of crap out there, though. Um, it has to be said. And, and through no fault of, of the recruitment kind of agency or whatever, but also it just doesn't do, and it, a lot of the websites don't do anything for them, really. They are just yeah. that shop window um, without really the kind of substance behind it to actually help them function as a business. And now, you know, it's like 40,000 recruitment agencies, registered businesses in the UK. So there's a lot to compete with, right? What, uh, if, if you were a recruiter, um, <laughs> if you were a recruiter <clears throat> or a recruitment agency owner, which you obviously have been, and you were sat listening to this podcast and you went, oh, I wonder if I wonder if my website's rubbish. I'm not really sure. What questions are you asking yourself to figure out whether you're one of the people that need to update their uh, their websites or not? Because I feel like uh, quite often they don't know what they don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you, yeah, you think yeah, that sure. it's doing I, some sort of job for you. If you're if you're getting a, a cold call from me, then that that's probably a big sign your website isn't so great. So yeah, <laughs> if you get a, a phone call from me, then uh, no, there's a few things you could check. In all fairness, so you can. So if you're on your website in the browser, uh, there's a quick way you can kind of check to see, you know, if there's things that you can approve or pass on to the developer. So there's this thing called Google Lighthouse. So when on, you're on your you're on your website, um, right click on your website, little tooltip kind of toolbar pops up. You press Inspect, and then this uh, developer panel pops up on the right hand side. And on the tab at the top, there'll be uh, something that says Google Lighthouse. A lighthouse. You can click on that. And then run a report, and it will basically tell you the, the speed of your website um, out of 100. So you probably want it about maybe 60, 70 out of 100. Yeah, you know, if you get it to 100, that's amazing. But 60, 70 is a good speed. Um, it will tell you about kind of accessibility, uh, best practice, uh, and also kind of an SEO score as well. And you want all of those to be probably 90 out of 100 as well, all kind of like little green circles. Um, so that's a good way to kind of check to see if your, your website's good. Um, I say images as well. A lot of people use low res images mm -hmm. for their websites. Uh, and you can tell when you land on a website and, and the, the images aren't great, it kind of puts you off um, a little bit. So, yeah, and you can kind of, your developer could do this for you. But, yeah, you can kind of do, you know, high res images for desktops or low res images for kind of mobile devices. Um, spelling mistakes and tire plays, obviously, yeah, you know, try and avoid that as much as possible. Um you want as many resources on there you know there's so many kind of resources you can kind of use these days as well like you know there's so many integrations so you have like chat bots or virtual chats you know a lot of people are going to be hitting your website outside of working hours if they're working nine to five in the office they're they're hitting your website you know maybe between five and eight you know when they're looking for a job when they're applying for jobs and things like that so you can have kind of chatbot integrations or virtual chat integrations you can kind of uh use to kind of field those queries um I say put some resources on there, put video on there, put real images of your company as well. Um, I'm bad for it. I have a lot of stock images uh, on my website, but then it's just me in my house uh, a lot of the time. And you probably don't want to see that. So I've got a picture of me and the team. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got, a, I've got my dog. I'll get my dog for the kitchen. I'll get bear yeah. for the kitchen. But um, I say, yeah, use a lot of kind of real images, you know, from your office, of your team, of, of kind of social nights out, things like that. So, there's a few things you can you can kind of uh, do, but yeah, give me a call, and I'll, I'll help you out. I'll give you some advice. What's um, in terms of like uh, recruiters that you're working with? Are you working specifically with agency recruiters, or do you also look at you know internal careers websites that kind of stuff as well, or is it predominantly just? Uh, I just do recruitment agencies at the moment. I think. Uh, hopefully in a couple of years, a few years, we can kind of move into careers websites. Um, but they tend to be very different. A careers website is, and, and you know this, obviously you, you kind of work with, I guess, with recruiters yeah. and internal talent teams, you know, at, at HelloFresh or kind of small recruitment agencies at, at wherever, you know, in America or whatnot. So um, I guess you get to see kind of both sides. But yeah, a careers website is very different to a recruitment agency website and there's different 
demands, different needs, there's different kind of integrations involved. So I just focus on the, the recruitment agency market at the moment, but you know, I've got that background in TA. Um, I've overseen the development of, of kind of uh, career websites and stuff like that. So yeah, I think we're going to move into that eventually. Awesome. That's interesting. Um, so s- sort of switching gear, which is the most commonly used podcast term ever. Um, switching gear slightly. What, uh, obviously you're, you're out in the marketplace, cold calling people, listening to their challenges. What do you, how, how, firstly, how do you feel about the recruitment market at the moment? And what are you sort of hearing and seeing as people's kind of biggest challenges right now? Um, it's probably, I mean, you just have to kind of look on, on LinkedIn and, uh, and maybe through the nature of my work at the moment, I'm probably connected to more recruitment agencies or more recruiters than your average recruiter might be. But I, I think, and, and when I do speak to recruitment agencies, sometimes people are kind of siloed and they don't realize that, you know, the market, how it is for them is the market for everyone else as well. And and obviously, you know, last year, you know, everyone was focused on biz dev, you know, it's very different to uh, the 21 market, the 22 market, and then you kind of went into this 23 market where, you know, the economy did change and jobs did dry up and employees mm-hmm. were more picky about who they took on. Um, and I think that's the same, you know, in the, in the UK or, you know, in the kind of US at the moment. Um, so I think people are, switching up a gear and kind of focusing more on, on kind of business development from what I've seen, um, picking up the telephone. There seems to be more kind of talk about kind of, you know, picking up the telephone, get on the telephone, talk to people, talk to clients, talk to candidates. Um, and maybe they're not a move away from personal branding, but maybe, um, less time investment in it or, or using that personal branding alongside, you know, calling people, cold calling, whatever it may be. Um, also kind of automations, I mean, AI, I, I won't go into it cause everyone, you know, I'm sure everyone's kind of bored of it now, but yeah, um, AI and, and the benefits of that. And I think that will, that will massively change the recruitment market over the next kind of few years. Um, automations at the moment, I think, yeah, I think recruitment agencies need to be looking at automations. Mm-hmm. Um, that was, that was very big last year where it was kind of, you know, email marketing, uh, automations or, or adding kind of automation to your CRM system or whatever it may be, you know, people should be kind of looking at and that, that's what kind of people seem to kind of talk about at the moment. And I guess most recently, I feel like there has been a pickup, you know, when I am talking to people and the things I do see on LinkedIn, the market seems to have kind of picked up and, it, and you always have that lull for the first kind of little bit of January and then kind of the middle of January onwards, then yeah. everyone starts hiring and you get that kind of run up up until you know, probably May, June, when the summer holidays start kind of kicking in. So I think there's more positivity around now than there was kind of last year. But yeah, I think everyone was in the same boat last year. Yeah, last year was uh, pretty rough for recruitment agencies, I would (laughs) say. Um, Knowing some of the results that I know, I mean, yeah, just very, very hard conditions. And I think it's still, it's still, you know, people get stuck. It's really interesting what you said about um, the kind of personal branding and all of that kind of stuff, because I totally agree. I think the reality is that that personal marketing, personal branding will only take you so far. I think people really invested in their own sort of LinkedIn profiles and that kind of stuff, which is super important, but they forgot that, you know, it's only 2% of people that really uh, put in, on LinkedIn, um, mm. the rest of the time, and the rest of us, you know, you need to you need to be making calls, sending emails, using automation, and getting out there to, to basically find find roles to work on. Right? Um, as a as a cold caller for your own business, have you got any uh, any hints and tips? What's your favourite um... random technique for uh, for cold calling? No, I'm really bad at it. Like, don't don't take my advice. Like, no, everyone's pretty <laughs> better than me. Um, but uh, you're you're from Pareto, aren't you? You used to work at Pareto, and um, yeah. I remember Pareto were very very good at at kind of their their sales training, their kind of sales training. They're like a little academy, didn't they? Kind of sales training academy and stuff like that. But um, we did. Yeah, their their yeah their salespeople used to be really good. I used to kind of respect them. They're really kind of good. Um, 
Well, I used to do sales recruitment, so I'm not too bad at it. Um, uh, and I used to work on, on, on some tough sales floors and boiler rooms and stuff like that. So I'm not too bad at it. Um, I guess tips. I don't really have any tips. It's just kind of like finessing it, really. It's just finessing it. Being, I think when you're pitching recruiters as well, I think they appreciate a good pitch. Yeah. Uh, I think salespeople, uh, they appreciate a good pitch. Um, so when I'm pitching a salesperson or a recruitment person, you know, if you've got a good introduction, you sound confident, you know, you're, you're confident in your products, you love your products, you believe in your products, uh, and you can kind of get out there and, and, and kind of ask them some, or kind of grab their attention. You know, I'll, I'll probably be like, you know, kind of grab a few minutes of your time, just want to chat about, you know, how's business going for you at the moment and, and see how we can kind of possibly help you, um, you know, develop your website to kind of bring in more candidates and more clients or things like that, or, or kind of, you know, put some, you know, that revenue figure into the head. Oh, okay, you can kind of make my website better, which are going to bring in more revenue for me. Okay, yeah, maybe I'll give you 30 seconds of my time. So I try and just deliver that and then just ask kind of consistent, relevant, probing questions. Um, and don't be afraid. Like, yeah, you're going to, I mess up some of it. Like, just don't be afraid. Just carry on. Just keep on cracking on. Uh, I love standing up pitching. I'm a good standing up pitcher. So, yeah, yeah. I think when you're pitching, just, yeah, stand up. Smiling, I know it's really kind of old school, I suppose, but yeah, smiling on the phone. Smile while you um, dial. Happy people sell. It, it works. It works. You can see it, it in someone's voice they're when they're smiling, or when they're laughing, and it, it comes across and it's infectious. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Smile, yeah, and uh, I don't know. Have a beer. Have a beer before you pitch. I don't know. Um, yes, that's, that's one of the best. <laughs> If you're having There's a tough energy, day, go right? and have a beer at lunch and uh, pick worst. it up in the afternoon. That's the worst no, yeah. well, I, there, there was a there was a girl uh, that um, at Pareto specifically. You have to do an exam, a cold calling exam, and I still remember she failed her exam like two two or three times in a row in the morning. So she went and oh. had a couple of shots of tequila at lunchtime, came back and nailed it because it was just nerves. You know, <laughs> it was just nerves. Yeah. Um, this is, you know, 15 years ago or whatever, even longer. I think it's before, but, uh, yeah, before 2009, 2010, or maybe even 2012, it kind of started changing and people started being more sensible, but yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sensible. We'll go with the word sensible. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, good advice. And I think the thing about sales, uh, if, you know, to anybody that's going, oh, do you know what? <clears throat> I need to do more BD and find more clients for my recruitment business. The reality is that you need to be doing in this world everything. So you need to be doing personal branding. You need to be, you know, trying to write blogs. You need to be using automation. But there really is no substitute for just consistent hard effort um, on the phones and via emails, is my genuine mm -hmm. opinion. Because I think the reality is that so many people have reverted to just sending emails and just using LinkedIn that actually, depending on your audience, you can really cut through that noise by getting somebody's mobile number and just picking up the phone yeah. because you are actually differentiating yourself purely by the fact that you're the one that's cold calling them. Um, yeah. And I think people sort of feel like they're interrupting people a little bit, but the reality is, you know, if you interrupted them and they tell you to get lost, they were never going to work with you anyway. It's not because you cold called them that they're not going to work with you. They just didn't want to yeah. work with you. So yeah. you're better off knowing and try now. again in three months' time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, I'd, I'd say yeah. Try the. Um, I'm a big fan of kind of ABM, like uh, account-based marketing. I think that you get that applied in, in kind of SaaS a lot. Uh, I think maybe kind of moving that into recruitment agencies would be helpful, and then mix that with um, there's a sales technique or a, a book called the Challenger Sell that came out of a, a company called CEB. Um, which, yeah. in my opinion, made hands down some of the best kind of salespeople in the industry. So, yeah, I said the challenge is our mix of account based marketing. I think that's really good. And uh, you've got go. a copy there, haven't you? There you go. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm a big fan of it. Yeah. yeah. Good book. Get a copy. Yeah. That and uh, The Jelly Effect by Andy Bounds. That would be a, a, um, a constant recommendation. I I know that one. I'll make a note yeah. of The Jelly Effect. Uh, it's really good. It's just about not saying stuff that people don't care about, basically. Um, okay. So it's uh, it's a really cool communication book. And Andy Bounds is a very good sales trainer for anybody looking to improve that side of things. Um, 
So yeah, look, the, the uh, thanks for the introduction and obviously for a few bits of advice, uh, Robert. Really appreciate it. Um, I think what we well, not I think I know what we normally do to wrap up these conversations is ask for um, top three tips. I, I think what would be good for me is you obviously um, talked at the beginning of the call about how you would assess the website. I would love if you could just summarize that into top, into three top things. The first one I think is Google Lighthouse. So using that, listen back in the episode if you missed it out, missed that uh, bit, listen back to, you know, Robert's advice how, on how to do it. What would be the other two things that you, you know, if you're assessing your website and saying, do I need to get somebody in to fix this? What would you, uh, what are the other two things you'd recommend? Oh, I don't know. I think it's hard to pin down to two. I'm just going to like chuck loads of things at you, but um, I'd, it's kind of basic, but make sure, and I think most websites are uh, kind of mobile responsive, but make sure it looks good on yeah on mobile. Yeah. Um, I, most are, I, 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 I like I encounter a few that aren't these days, but yeah, most people are going to be hitting your, your website on their mobile. So make sure it is, it looks good on your mobile and it kind of works properly. Great and too. Uh, images, images and video. And video, obviously, yeah, big thing for you guys. So yeah, use use good images uh, that are relevant to your business, and use some video. Like yeah, I love hitting a website and I can kind of look at some video and you know, don't need to kind of also play, but you know, some video about your company, about you know the you know the product or about the team or you know maybe about uh, the charity work you do or the sustainable side of your business or or you know get to know the founders things like that really some video content yeah awesome love that um and i totally agree you know i think also with video people overthink it they think it needs to be super polished it really doesn't it just needs to be relatively good you know um and insightful and authentic uh depending on where it sits on the website you know landing page you want you know super sexy video as much as you can but if it's like a a founder introduction thing and it's in the our team tab it can just be a talking head video like this really in my opinion yeah. um so it's not as not as arduous as you might uh, as you might originally think and also we back when we started out willow we had this little animated video that talked about why why willow work maybe i'll share it in the show notes um it was about 500 quid to make or something like that maybe less um and it was sensational it made our business look way bigger than it was um just by having this cool cool thing and this guy with a really awesome voice talk over it um <laughs> you'd be genuinely surprised like how uh how good it was for for like building brand awareness so good advice again well look robert thank you so much for coming on the podcast if um if somebody wants to get in touch what's the best way for them to uh to connect with you uh cold call me cold call me there you go uh no just through the website i guess yeah through my website i it's our website it's called get in touch with me through my website no my, my email address is there i love a phone call give me a call i'm quite lonely Perfect. so i like talking to people uh or linkedin i'm on linkedin all the time as well so message me on linkedin all my home address is on my website just if you're in the area come by to la make nice. your cup of tea Wonderful. Well, we will make sure that that gets onto the podcast show notes. So hopefully not too many people turn up your door uh, looking for a <laughs> coffee. But if they do, you know, hopefully they're looking for a website too. Yeah, you're more than welcome. Yeah. You never know. You never know. Well, look, thanks, Robert. Thanks for joining. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. And please, obviously, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and do all of that stuff. And, uh, yeah, thanks very much. Speak to you next week. Bye.